Greetings and Dandavats, dear devotees and friends. With Nirjala Kodasi approaching, I'm sure there are some of us who may be considering doing the tapasya of the Nirjala Kodasi. Um, I'll speak a little bit about Ecodesy in general after this. But first of all, I'm just going to read the story of the Near Jala Codicy and how it came about. And then elucidate on General Codicy after the story. Okay? So, Near Jala Codicy. The description of Near Jala Codicy which occurs during the month of May-June, is found in the Brahma Vaivarta Purana, in the conversation between Vyasdev and Bhimasen. Once, Bhimasena, the younger brother of Yudhisthir, inquired from the great sage Srila Vyasdev, O most learned and worshipful grandfather, please hear my request. My elder brother Yudhisthir, Mother Kunti Devi, brothers Arjun, Lakhul and Sahadev, and Draupadi, do not eat anything on the day of Ekodasi. They, especially Yudhisthir, always tell me that I should also fast on Ekodasi. But I always tell them that though I know that to fast on Ekodasi is an injunction of the scriptures, I cannot bear my hunger and therefore I am unable to fast. I can give in charity as per my capacity. I can worship Lord Keshava with proper rules and regulations, but I cannot fast. So please instruct me how I can obtain the result of a codicy without having to fast. On hearing these words of Bhima Shane, Sri Vyastev said, O oh Bhima, if you want to go to the heavenly planets and avoid the hellish planets, then you must refrain from eating on both the codices of each month. Bhima said, O great sage, it is impossible for me to observe fast on 24 codices every year, as instructed by the Lord. What to speak of fasting day and night, I cannot even tolerate my hunger. For even a moment, the fire of hunger known as Brikka is always present within my stomach, and it is extinguished only by voracious eating. But with great endeavour, I can fast only one day in a year. Therefore, please instruct me about how, about a vow that I can follow to attain auspiciousness both in this life and the next. Sri Vyastev said, O King, you have already heard from me about the Vedic religious principles and the duties of the human beings. But in this age of Kali, not everyone is capable of following these rules and regulations. Therefore, I will tell you about the sublime method by which you can achieve great results. This method is the essence of all the Puranas. Anyone who observes the codices of waning and waxing moons by fasting never goes to hell. Hearing Vyastev's words, that strongest warrior, Bhimasena, became frightened and shivered like a leaf on a banyan tree and said, O oh, grandfather, what shall I do? I am totally unable to fast twice a month throughout the year. Therefore, O oh, my lord, kindly instruct me about one vow that awards the most merit and how by observing it I can achieve all benefits. Then Sri Vyastev replied, The ecodicy which occurs during the waxing moon in the month of May-June, during the sun's presence in either Taurus or Gemini Rasi, is called Nirjal Ecodicy. One should observe total fast even from drinking water on this ecodicy. On this day, one should perform Achman for purification by drinking that amount of water in which a single mustard seed or a drop of gold can be immersed. One should place the said amount of water in his palm, held in such a way as to resemble a cow's ear. 
If one drinks more or less water than this, it will amount to drinking of wine. One must not eat anything at all on this accuracy, otherwise his vow will be broken. One should not drink even water from the movement of sunrise from the day of a codicy until the sunrise on the day of duodicy. In this way, if one strictly observes this a codicy without drinking water, then he can attain the results of observing all the codicies of the year. In the early morning on the day of duodicy, one should take bath and give gold and water and charity to the Brahmins. Thereafter, the follower should gladly eat with the Brahmins. O oh, Bhima Sena, now please hear about the piety one accumulates by observing this ecodicy. By following this ecodicy, one can achieve the result of following all the ecodicies throughout the year. Once, Lord Vishnu, who holds a conch, a disc, a club and a lotus flower in his hand, told me, If a person gives up all varieties of religion and surrenders unto me, and follows this near ecodicy, which is very dear to me, he is certainly relieved of all sinful reactions. One cannot attain the supreme destination by giving wealth and charity or attain any benefit by following smarter rules and regulations in Kali Yuga. In fact, the Vedic religious principles have been extinct in this age of Kali, which is polluted with various faults. O son of Vayu, what more can I tell you? Eating is actually prohibited on all the ecodices, and even the drinking of water is prohibited on near jolly codicy. By observing this ecodicy, one achieves the piety of visiting all the holy places. At the time of death, such a person is not approached by the fierce-looking Yamadutas. Rather, he is approached by the divine-looking Vishnu Dutas to be transferred to the abode of Vishnu. If one gives water and cows and charity after observing this ecodicy, then he is freed from all his sinful activities. When the other Pandavas heard about the glories of this ecodicy, they resolved to observe it. From that day onward, Bhima Sain began observing this Nirjal ecodicy, which became famous as Pandava Nirjal or Bhima Saini ecodicy. By following this ecodicy, sinful activities as huge as Sumeru or Man Man Mandra Mountain are at once burned to ashes. O King, Lord Krishna has declared that any pious activities such as taking bath in holy places, giving charity, chanting Vedic mantras and performing sacrifices that are carried out on this near Jal ecodicy become inexhaustible. One who reads or hears the glories of this ecology with devotion goes back to the abode of Vaikuntha. The result one attains by observing the vow of Amavasya conjoined with Pratipad and offering oblations to the forefathers during the solar eclipse is attained simply by hearing the glories of this ecology. Okay, so... We kind of have the idea that near Jala Kadesi excuses us or gets us off the hook for missing a few Kadesis during the year or whatever. And it is a very, very heavy tapasya to do. But it's a tapasya. And if you can do it, fine. Um, I would advise you all to drink a gallon of water the evening before just to make it a bit easier and it really does help I mean we've all done it at some point before and um, this brings me back to the whole idea of a codicy general a codicy a codicy is loosely translated as fast from grains But that's only half it. That's only half the idea. The fasting itself is just, it's actually a tapasya, an austerity. The whole idea of a codicy is to increase 
spiritual activity on that day. Another meaning of a codice is to remain home with Krishna on that day. And that, that actually just means to um, increase your devotional activities and try and be more Krishna conscious on that day. So, if one just observes the normal Akkadasi fast and doesn't increase any spiritual activity, that's only half an Akkadasi. If one increases his spiritual activity on that day and doesn't keep the fast, it's also kind of half an Akkadasi, but it's better. It's better, that's a way, it's better to do that, of course. Of course. Um. I remember in the time of Srila Guru Maharaj that if I had to do some service particularly involving travel Srila Guru Maharaj if it was it was travel over one or two hours Srila Guru Maharaj would, would, would send for me would have me sent for by one of the devotees and they would bring me to the kitchen, sit me down, and I would be fed full prasadam, grains included. We all know that grains are offered every day to deities anyway, um, but not taken by the devotees. But Guru Maharaj would have me take full prasadam when I had to go to Calcutta for service on the codices. So, we all know that Srila Guru Maharaj was one of the most austere Vaishnavas of his day and through his entire spiritual life. In fact, he was so austere that his god brothers only, you know, they couldn't tolerate it. They couldn't tolerate it. But here we go. Here we see that he gave less importance to austerity than to service. And he was very practical also. He cared more for the well-being of the devotees in their service and in the carrying out of that service than any spiritual injunction or any rule or regulation. So, full ecodicy means, yes, the fast from grains, and to increase the spirit, your spiritual activities on that day. Okay, so did Guru Maharaj encourage the Nirjala Kadasi? Not really. Did he stop people from doing it? No. He left it up to everybody to do or not to do. And Srila Gurudev also wasn't a big fan of these. extra austerities but if you can do it and if you want to do it by all means do it but be sensible and do it in in the try you know drink lots of water the night before definitely as much as possible that really does help if you're on your own then it's a bit crazy but if you can be with some devotees or if you can increase your chanting or reading whatever by all means, go ahead. But it doesn't get you off the hook. It's an austerity. It's a yagya. It's not service. Okay, just remember that. All right. I'm gone over the 10 minutes. I hope YouTube lets me post this. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So take care. And um, thank you for taking the time to listen. Be well, keep your spirits up, and remember Shishi Guru Angaranga and the Vaishnavas. And please say a prayer for me, as I need all the help I can get. Thank you very much indeed. Dandavat Pranams. All glory Shishi Guru Angaranga. <laughs>